Now let's get the inside track on bugs. I'm not talking insects, microorganisms <laughs> such as bacteria, which, as you know, is pretty much everywhere. It's but nowhere more than in hospitals, and the number of hospital-acquired infections have been rising steadily. One problem is microbes being transferred by staff touching patients, which is why healthcare professionals, of course, always wear gloves or should do, and there are hand sanitizers just about on every wall when you walk through a hospital. Mm, absolutely. Well, our next guest's company has come up with a solution that embeds antimicrobial -microb molecules directly into gloves in order to combat this cross contamination. So the glove kills germs on contact. Rob Gross is Chief Executive of Chemical Intelligence and came up with this idea. And it's been a real uh, job, hasn't it? Because you came up with the idea of many, many years ago. Tell us how. But it's only been this May that you've managed to launch. Yeah, I was working uh, distributing standard gloves to the NHS um, back in 2010. And it was after the pandemic, the swine flu pandemic, and there was a lot of promotion about hand hygiene. Um, and also there was a lot of media attention on uh, hospital acquired infections and MRSA. And I just couldn't understand why there wasn't any antimicrobial properties on, on gloves. But you're not, oh, sorry. sorry, I was just going to say, you're not a scientist, though. You're not a chemist. So how did you go from that idea to, to actually coming up with these gloves? Well, I, I formed a team with some really specific uh, expertise. Um, the parameters were really complicated in terms of making this happen, which is, which is why I don't think it had been done before. Um, you had to produce some technology that was going to be very cheap. It was going to have to have a very uh, good safety profile. Uh, and it also had to have a very rapid kill. Um, people don't wear gloves for very long in hospitals, about five minutes. So the, so the kill rate had to be really, really fast. So combining those three parameters was a very, very complex thing to do. So you had the idea. How yeah. did the idea go from being an idea to you actually being able to start this company and start making these gloves? Well, we started to um, look at uh, traditional biocides, um, but in the end we had to in, uh, synthesise a new molecule. It had to be a bespoke design. So we had a, a very small team of uh, scientists, uh, Dr Paul White, who had some expertise in single oxygen, which was the technology that we used. And then we partnershiped with a company in Malaysia called Hartaliga, who were the biggest uh, nitrile manufacturers in the world. And then together we put our uh, glove know-how and ex uh, antimicrobial expertise together and then we came up with a glove which we launched this year. You make it sound so easy but it took a long time it and did. you had to fund a lot of this yourself mm. whilst it was mm. an idea that wasn't actually a mm. physical product. It was yeah. only m very recently that you actually got people on board to help fund. It's true. Um, I did, find, I did initially fund it. Uh, I had another, my distribution company, which was uh, being drained of resources. Uh, it was a very stressful period in terms of trying to get funding from anybody because the crash had happened and nobody was really giving money. Um, but in the end, I managed to really hang in by a thread until I got my first license agreement, which was with Hartaliga in Malaysia. And, and then they began to fund it. And me. now, I mean, the idea is to sell these gloves mm -hmm. around the globally, yes. will they be cheaper than the current gloves that are available to the NHS? Um, we don't dictate the pricing because it has to come from the manufacturer of the glove now and it has to go through their distribution, but it's been produced, all I can say it's been produced at a very, very low cost and nobody in the chain, the supply chain, wants it to be a barrier. They want it to make this a standard glove universally and they want it to be available to everybody. And it's not just gloves that you're going to be dealing with, this technology, this antimicrobial um, element mm -hmm. is going to be used in other areas as well. We bespoke this molecule and we, it's been designed in a way that it can be adapted to other medical devices. So hopefully we can get uh, the chance to re help reduce infections on our other high-risk uh, medical devices. And this is a game changer, isn't it? When it comes mm. to the spread of infection, uh, potentially it could be mm. a, a huge game changer, presumably. Yeah, we, we've never felt we're like the silver bullet. Um, organisms are building resistance all the time and producing different strains. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a major problem. What we're hoping is, is that we can provide some of that help to reducing infection and if we can reduce infection and help that process, then we can also reduce the financial burden on the health service. So I'm just thinking, you know, in, in Western hospitals and healthcare organisations, of course, there's a very um, robust system when it comes to infection mm. spread. But, you know, in developing nations in areas where it's difficult or where there might be, you know, a disaster or disease spread, I mean, mm. could be quite a low cost way of preventing disease spread. Absolutely. I mean, at the moment, standard gloves are a passive barrier. 
the, the technology we've now incorporated is proven to effectively reduce very rapidly the, con the contamination that you get on the gloves and so that in turn should help the potential for reducing infection in these high risk areas. Okay Rob Gross we wish you luck with uh, the future thank you very much indeed. Thank you.